Hello, and welcome along to the uh, second in a, the series of videos where we are looking at how to set up Chocolatey within an organizational context. So in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, setting up Chocolatey initially. What do we need to do to bring Chocolatey onto the first of the machines within our organization? What do we need to download? Uh, how do we need to install it? Uh, how do we get up and running with it? So uh, if we switch over to here, we'll see this is me on my workstation machine. This is the one uh, in the previous video we spoke about how I was going to have a series of uh, different machines, uh, some that would have direct access to the internet, some that wouldn't. Uh, so this workstation machine is one that's going to have access to the internet. It's the one that we're going to be able to do the initial setup and configuration of Chocolatey. So in terms of the documentation here with the uh, how to set up uh, Chocolatey for internal use, uh, I'll maybe just zoom in a little bit here so it's a little bit clearer. Uh, what we're going to be walking through in this video is really the prepare for internal use. So if we look at the documentation, uh, what we'll see here is that there are lots and lots of information. There's, there's quite a few steps here. Uh, these steps, there, there's 31 of these, there's 31 steps here. So with most things in chocolate.org, there is explicit operations that you can do. There, you do this step, you do this step, you do this step. We do that so that everything is documented. But what you will find if you keep scrolling down is you'll find that there is a script that you can run. And this script is a representation of the all the steps that you would have done uh, by walking through those steps manually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this script. Now, uh, normal uh, caveats to this, this is a script that you get from the internet. Obviously, uh, make sure that you are happy with it uh, before just arbitrarily running it within your environment. Uh, just sense check it. It's normal procedures uh, in terms of installing things from the internet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the my workstation machine and I'm going to start looking through this script. So I'm going to click copy here and I'm just going to open, I mean this is a brand new fresh machine that uh, I've, I've not done anything to. So I think the only text editor that I have on here is notepad. Let's go ahead and uh, paste that script into here and we'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can start walking through what's contained within it. So if I go into Zoom, um, I'm going to have to do this a few times. But let's zoom in a few times so that we can see what we've got here. Uh, how does that look? Maybe one more. Two, zoom in. So we'll start talking through what's being done uh, within this script and uh, talk about it. So the, the first part of the script here is about setting the execution policy. Um, that's typical when you're running PowerShell. So within the context of this process, this session, uh, we'll set execution policy uh, to bypass. Um, that will obviously be uh, reverted once that process has uh, uh, has ended. So that's, that's fairly typical. So in here, what uh, the script is gonna do, is gonna create some directories within our file system. So just to show that there's no smoke and mirrors here, um, let's bring up Windows Explorer as well. Let's try and have two, both at the same time. So on this machine, on my C drive, it wants to create a Choco setup uh, and then within that a files folder and a packages folder. I don't have any of that on my machine. So that's what this script is gonna do. Then it's gonna reach out and it's gonna attempt to install Chocolatey and it does that using uh, the install.ps1 file. So if we grab that URL and open that in the browser, Again, it's a script that you get from the internet. Uh, guidance would be that you uh, read through it, understand what's going on. But it is, I mean, what this script is, is it's literally just uh, downloading, extracting, and installing Chocolatey onto the machine. Uh, it is signed uh, with our uh, code signing certificate, so it can be trusted from that respect. But again, uh, read through it, make sure that you're happy with it. So all that uh, the script that we have here is doing is executing that script. The next thing, uh, this part's uh, commented out, so if you need it, you can definitely uncomment it. This is all about uh, enabling FIPS compliance. So if you're a government or a military organization, you may be compliant uh, to use uh, the uh, FIPS indicator. So uh, there's a feature that you can uh, turn on if you need to. The next part here is all about uh, adding that chocolatey license file. So the chocolatey license file you will have uh, got from the uh, sales team if you've uh, reached out to them and you're, you're either on a trial or you are on a, uh, you're, you're now a paying customer, you will have been given a chocolatey chocolate license.xml file. So what this part of the script is all about is putting that chocolatey license.xml file into the right location. So uh, 
it's going to want us to copy it into the Choco Setup Files folder, and then it will copy it to the right location once uh, Chocolate is set up and installed. So that's what that part is. The next part is that it's going to want to install the Chocolate License Extension. So the install.ps1 file that we I looked at before, that's all about getting open source version of Chocolate installed on the machine. So on top of that, we then install the chocolatey.extension file, which brings in the uh, license features. Now, in the context of these videos, I'm going to be a paying customer. So I have a license file that is the same as though you were a paying customer to Chocolatey uh, software. Now, if you're on a trial, things are slightly different. So with the Chocolatey license file that I have, I have ac direct access to the Chocolatey license feed which means that I can install packages directly from there. If you're on a trial, you won't be able to do that. Uh, but on a trial setup, you will have been given access to the uh, the nut kegs to perform that installation. And so what you need to do here is you need to place them into a separate, a different folder and run a slightly different uh, script. Now, all of that is mentioned on the uh, steps in here. So if you are on a trial, it, the guidance is slightly different. Um, but just have a look at the script uh, and comment and uncomment the sections that are applicable to you. Okay, so with that done, uh, we've then got some uh, setup and configuration that we need to do for Chocolate. So in here, we're setting uh, the cache location and execution timeout. So these are just uh, recommended best practices. However, on this website, there is uh, much more configuration options that you can set up within Chocolate. So I would encourage you to have a look through that, uh, see what features, uh, configuration options you want for your environment. And then if you need to, you can add them into the script. Uh, so for what we're doing here, uh, all I'm doing is setting the cache locations. So that's where files will be downloaded to. And then the command execution timeout is literally changing how long a Chocolate command is allowed to run before it will ultimately time out. So these two are for open source Chocolatey, uh, but we're also going to set a couple of uh, license configuration options as well. So in this one, this is uh, internalize append user original location. This is this is one specific to a feature within uh, Chocolatey for Business, which is uh, package internalizer and how it works. And the other one here is reduce install package space usage. That is uh, specifically for uh, package reducer. And that's all about cleaning up files that are left on the file system once uh, Chocolatey has completed its operation. And it's knowingly going to go in and delete files that are no longer required once that installation has happened. Again, lots of information on the uh, Chocolatey configuration page. So I encourage you to go and have a look at that. This part is all about getting Chocolatey Agent installed. Now on this machine, uh, this workstation machine that I have here, I'm not going to install Chocolate Agent because this is my uh, machine that I'm using that has access to the internet. It's able to download uh, files that I require and then put them somewhere for installing on all the other machines that I'm ultimately going to have. So I don't need Chocolate Agent on this machine, uh, but if you need Chocolate Agent, again, it's just a case of commenting out the relevant sections and uh, enabling the different features to make Chocolate Agent work in the way that you want it to. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that commented out because I don't need that. Uh, the next section of the script is all about downloading and internalizing packages that we want. So within my setup here, um, I don't want to have to reach out and install Chocolatey from the internet every time I want to install it on a machine. And I don't want to have to reach out and download and install Chocolatey extension from each uh, or on each machine that I want to install it on. So here, this script is using the Choco download command and that's all about downloading packages from somewhere fully internalizing them, and then saving them on the file system. So what that means is for uh, for bandwidth is that I'm saving bandwidth. I've, I've, I'm, I'm not having to download uh, a big MSI every single time I install a package. I'm not having to reach out to a third party website to download that. Chocolatey will look at that nut keg, it will blow it apart, it will find out what uh, files need to be downloaded, it will download all of them, and then it will stitch them back together into a nut keg that's then fully internalized, and then I can use that within my uh, environment. So what this is doing is it's downloading Chocolate Extension, it's downloading Chocolate Agent, uh, and then it will also go off and download uh, any other ones that we uh, tell it to. So in terms of the script that we have here, it's going to download the couple for us. We could add in other ones that, that we wanted to, but we'll leave it at, uh, as, it's, as, as it is just now. 
Um, the other part here is it will then run off and download a installation script that is specific for if I'm in an air gap network. So previously, when we scrolled up, if we scroll up again here, what it did before was it used the install script that's hosted on chocolate.org. So that's for a machine, my workstation machine, that has access to the internet. If you are on a machine that doesn't have access to the internet, then we have a sample installation script that you can use, which will uh, perform a local installation of Chocolate from a uh, known location. So we may use that in a future video, uh, but for now, we will look at um, running this script and, and seeing what it does for us. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, one of the packages that it will download by default is a package called chocolate.server. Now, chocolate.server is very much a proof of concept uh, package repository. It's intended for literally a proof of concept. It's not in, really intended for production usage. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm go not going to download that package because in this series of videos, we are going to make use of the Nexus package repository. So I'm not going to download that one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this file and I'm just going to save it into, uh, I want to create a directory here called temp. Uh, looks like I might already have one. Oh, I do have one, sorry. And then in here, I'm going to call this initial.ps1 and I'm going to hit save there. Okay. So I'm going to open up PowerShell as uh, an admin. So we will need to run this as an admin uh, because it is placing files into the program data folder. So we will need to have an elevated context. So I'm going to bring this PowerShell over here and I'm going to change the properties on here a little bit so that we can make sure that everyone can see. So here we have PowerShell, it's maybe a little bit big now. Okay, so here we have PowerShell. And if I CD into that C temp folder, then in here, I've got that initial.ps1 file. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and we'll we'll try and watch it uh, in flight. So let's maybe just set up a few things. So here's my PowerShell window. Here's the uh, Windows Explorer at the bottom there. So let's clear this out and I'm going to head and run that initial.ps1 file and we'll see what it does. So as we mentioned, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to reach out and it's going to install Chocolatey. So uh, we will see some uh, yellow text and potentially some red text flying through just with uh, uh, suggestions about what's happening as part of that process. Uh, but what we should find, if we look at the program data folder, we've now got Chocolate installed. So Chocolate is now installed. So what it's now prompting us to do uh, is it's prompting us to put that chocolatey license.xml file into the C setup uh, files folder. So if we go and have a look for that, uh, and there's the setup that it created, and there's the file, so there's nothing in there just now. But if I go over here and copy the license file that I have, so again, if you're on a trial, you may have to change certain things going forward here, but this chocolate license file, I am a paying customer of Chocolatey, so I will be able to have direct access to the license feed uh, going forward. So if I go ahead and hit return here, it's had what's known, what I refer to as the chicken and egg problem. So the red text there is, effectively chocolate is saying, oh, there's a chocolate license file, but I don't yet have the chocolate extension installed. So once both the chocolate extension are installed and the chocolate license file are in place, we won't see that red text anymore. And what we do see here uh, is uh, chocolate is now running the business version. So I know that because of the uh, extension, the addition of the business in the, in the end. If we go back, uh, we might not be able to see it. No, we I was going to show it what it looked like without Chocolate Extension installed, but I can't. So it's now installing Chocolate Extension, and it's uh, then going to start the process of downloading and internalizing some of those packages that we spoke about. So if we look up here to see what's going on, if we look again at the program data folder in Chocolate and in the lib folder, we'll see that packages, this is where all the packages that Chocolate installs live, in this lib folder. So we'll see here that the Chocolate Extension is being installed. And then we'll see package internalizer working. Uh, now that process may take a little while. The downloading of some of those files uh, can take a little bit of time. But uh, we, I may, I may, I may pause the video when that process starts, just so that uh, it doesn't uh, take up a lot of time in the video. 
But we'll see here now that the installation script uh, is going through and setting all those configuration options, the uh, cache location, the uh, command timeout exception. And now it's starting to download those packages. Now, what you will see is that it's starting to download more packages than we actually mentioned in the installation script. So in the, in the, in the installation script, we only asked for chocolatey, uh, .NET 461 and Chocolate GUI. But one of the things that Package Internalizer does is it looks at for any dependent packages. So it's also going to download any dependencies that are required for that package to work and for it to install correctly and then ultimately to run correctly. So what it's identified is that there are a number of uh, KBs that need to be in place before those things work. So we'll see here that this downloading has now started and it's identified that there are uh, an MSU or multiple MSUs that need to be downloaded. So these are quite big files. These are There's a 319 megabyte file here. But what's going to end up happening is that the NUPKEG that's generated will have that MSU contained within it. So on this machine, this setup machine, it's had to do the hard work of downloading all those things. But going forward, any other machine that needs that package won't have to do that download because Chocolate E has downloaded, it has internalized, and it's reconstituted that NUPKEG into a fully internalized artifact that I can then install on other machines. So in that air gap network that we speak about, or even on machines that have access to the internet, we're saving on that bandwidth, okay? So I'm gonna let this, uh, run through. There's no point in us sitting here uh, waiting for that to happen. So I'm going to pause the video, but I'll come back just before the downloads finish and then we'll pick up from where we left off. Hello, welcome back. So a few minutes have passed here. The uh, download of all the packages hasn't quite finished yet, but it's getting close. Um, so I just wanted to uh, start the video again so we can finish, see the uh, script finishing off. But what's happened now is that within our Choco setup and in our packages folder, this is one of the great things about Package Internalizer. What it's done is it's actually taken uh, the NUPKEG from the community repository. Now, obviously it's still coming from the community repository, but uh, the idea is that you have uh, vetted and approved the packages that you're downloading, but it ha has actually extracted all of the uh, packaging files, the new spec file, the uh, uh, chocolate install, the chocolate uninstall file. So if you wanted to completely bring these packages in-house and then maintain them in-house, the idea is that you could take these uh, files and put them into your source control repository and then you can uh, keep them updated from there. But in addition to adding the uh, the packaging files, it's also created all of these NUPKEGs. So these NUPKEGs, some of them are quite big in size. So this one here is almost 1.8 gigabytes in size, but it contains three separate MSUs that are used for different architectures. So, but this package is fully internalized. I, I wanna stress that point again. This package can be installed on any machine without reaching out to the internet. In fact, all of these packages can be installed on any machine with Chocolatey without reaching out to the internet at all. So you're saving on bandwidth and you have a package that will always work, okay? So what we need to do now, I mean, this script is now finished and we've got this set of, script, uh, set of packages. We need to put these packages somewhere that we can start installing them from. Now, the if we look back at the, uh, the how-to guide that we're following, so we've followed down through here, the next step that it talks about is uh, setting up installation on a machine without network access. So we will do that in the next video in the process of setting up our Nexus repository. We'll imagine initially that the Nexus repository doesn't have access to the internet. Um, in fact, it won't have access or it shouldn't have access to the internet because it's not within our DMZ. So we will use these steps here to bring the packages from our workstation machine into our uh, Nexus machine. And then as part as part of the installation of that Nexus repository, we will then look to how how we can set it up, how we can configure it, and how we can start using it to install packages from. So that's gonna be in the next video, uh, and that will cover the initial installation and configuration of Nexus. There'll be other configuration to work with uh, the Jenkins server that we spoke about. Uh, so there'll be an another video where it speaks about setting up Jenkins and then setting up multiple feeds within the Nexus repository to account for that. So 
hopefully this was useful to you uh, and hopefully I'll see you in uh, the next video where, we'll, where we will be talking about Nexus. Thank you very much.